Okay guys, today I'm gonna start constructing the gate. The width is 46 and a half and the height is 55 and a half. I'll show you guys how I measured that. I want the gate to follow the pattern of these rails and I want the height to be top of this rail to the bottom of that rail, which is 55 and a half inches on both sides. And uh, the width is 47 and a half inches like pinpoint accurate almost. Touching there. So, I'm gonna make the opening, the width, and then so, uh, Putting a double dual latch mechanism on this gate, uh, but I'll make the pattern like the rail. Okay, I'm getting my 255 and a half inch. Okay, guys, I'm using the first 55 and a half inch as a template to make the second one. I'll get the same length. Okay, I'm done with that. So I know I didn't show it for the first board, but for the second, so I'm going for the 246s and a half. Don't get me extension, but I make the miter cut this way. Reverse the board, like so, and get my measurement. I'll measure from here after I reverse the board here, and then I'll make the cut. I don't have to adjust the miter saw. So. Once again, I'm using the cut board for the width as a template to make the other cut. Okay guys, I got the frame on the ground on the flat surface. You don't try to be on the flat surface. It should be out there on the drive pavement because it's kind of got some missing pavers. But it's fine. I'm gonna put these in. Got my driver set to three inch and put some three inch screws. I use three inch deck screws to secure the frame and two inch to secure the wood ties. On the bottom. On the bottom. I'm gonna put it on the side to interfere with the door shed. And I know they'll be sunk in, but uh, it doesn't matter. I'll just put them through the bottom. I may drive one on the side as well, uh, but without using some glue. I'll put some wood glue between the joints and I'll drill them in place. Got my center cut. I toenail some screws in here and here. And then I'm gonna get my brace. Okay guys, I got my brace in place. Just marked it there, I'm gonna make that cut. Just marked it there, kinda centered it. And I marked under here on both sides. So I'm gonna cut this piece with a circular saw so the brace can just run through it. Okay guys, um, gotta put some glue and butt it in. It's very important that you make the top of that brace on the opposite side of the hinges. That's very important, so make note of that. Okay guys, got the gate up. Just putting it in position. I needed a shim. Just nailed a shim here to hold me in place. I use these wood ties to bracket the brace in. Right now, I'm just getting everything even. Gotta fix this, I gotta raise the gate up a little bit more to get it even with this. These pickets are 5 8 inch, and the latch I'm using, the dual latch mechanism, requires the gate to be, I mean, the width between the gate and the post to be 5 8 inch. So I use these pickets, I screwed it up to, as a guide. I'm just trying to adjust the height on the gate, and, uh, also put this block of wood for extra support. I'm using these braces to hold me in place until I get some pickets going, enough to get the hinges on. Then I'll pick it out. Just got one started, just a rough, put it, just screwing the hold it in place until I run me a string line across to run it. My door was leaning slightly, so I have to put another shim down here to get it even. And uh, we're good now. 
Okay, guys, I'm getting the hinges on right now before I continue on. I just want to get the door supported. Uh, this is dry eraser, by the way. Marked all my holes, got them started with a drill bit, and just got one started. So it's going to flush here. Got the hinge. Both my hinges in place. One on the bottom rail, one on the top rail. And uh, I'm gonna move my bottom support now, my lower support. I'll move them braces soon as I pick it over, but should be fine now. It should be supported, supported by the weight of the hinge. The hinges I bought were less than 10 bucks. I went with three of them. They support about 50 pounds each. The door is hovering around 100 pounds. Want to be safe and secure and give it a better look aesthetically. So I went with three hinges. But as you guys can see, there's a variety of handle and hinges that's fairly cheap that you can go with and um, latches. So just wanted to kind of show that to you guys. It's up to your liking or taste or your choice, which you prefer. I'm about to remove this guy and go over as far as I can. I got a little gap. It's a possibility that I may can get two pickets here. Maybe one and a half, we'll see. This is the center of the, where the door splits at. So I'm gonna mark it, cut it off, one on one side, one on the other side. Okay guys, to make this last picket fit with precision, I mark where I'll cut it at so it can fit the contour of the house. I'm using my jigsaw to get more precision cuts. It's more precision small cuts, like I'll do the latch mechanism on the other picket, and I'll show you guys that in a second. But... Okay guys, I'm done. I made a cut there. It's time to open the gate so I can get the final cut and see it swing open for the first time. I only got one screw on one side. So, uh, you gonna see right I just now. got it wedged here. I'm gonna open it and see what we got for the first time ever, guys. Here we go. Okay. Let's see. It's open, open and super smooth. I gotta drill these back in too. Cause the picket wouldn't go up flush. Wow. You can tell it's level guys. The, the door ain't swaying no either way. Like it's you can tell it's plumb. Because look at the how straight it is and it's not swinging um in either direction, no matter how far I open it. It's just sitting still, it's holding level. You know, if it's off a little bit, tend to swing either way. Okay guys, I took my orbital sander. I mean, I had sanding for um, a little bit just to smoothen the edges out on both. So I want to have a rough look. Now it's smooth. That's a smooth finish now, guys. Now I can put the handle on and the latch. I got the handle on. I put it about 40, 38 inches from here, 40 inches here. Um, it depends on your height off the ground. I'm gonna go bare minimum three feet with this, at least three feet off the ground, but this is perfect for us. I leveled it. Now, the latch. See, I got a straight, smooth surface to put that latch on. I'll show you guys the latch I bought. Okay, guys, this is the latch I'll be using. It's a dual opening latch. First thing you're gonna do is attach the latch to the side of the gate with two screws. So these are the two screws, that one and that one. I'll attach it to the side of the gate. The two screws are in, just drill them. You don't gotta make no pilot holes, just drill them in. Two for the screws. You set it, 
the hinge on the gate like so. I gotta put two screws here too. And uh, set it flush to the gate. I mounted it just below the top rail. So just below the top rail for my height. This is perfect for me. And then I'm gonna mark it. You can see I gotta notch the fence out here. Here. Okay. Bolt, screws on the front, here, here. Super easy, super simple. Guys, the latch may come apart, like this one came apart when I took it out the package, but these pieces lock it in place. You can assemble it back easy. The front plate faces, the groove, you see how this groove is made on this pull handle? It faces so the striker can go through it. Well, I have to cut out it, I have to notch that out with the GXL. And then I'll mount the plate. Time for us to mount the striker. See how the screw made? This is the only screw in the packet that made like that. But the that groove fits inside this hole. I'm gonna mount that on the lower hole here. Mount that here, lower hole. When you mount this striker, don't tighten this all the way in because it won't allow this to move. So the purpose of it to be not loose, but up on this joint, I can tighten this down a little bit more. Is for when you use the mechanism, it pushes the striker up. When you push the handle in or pull it out, pushes the striker up. So very simple um, design. Okay guys, after I marked, I pushed this up to the gate, marked my spot right here. I knew exactly where to put this in. I didn't know how far I wanted it to come out. So I got one screw started just to give it a, uh, a test. Oh, I also have to put a piece of board here, guys. There was nothing between here to mount the striker, so I just drilled a board here to mount the striker for the metal one. This is fine. I put two bolts here, but um, I just put one bolt here to kind of give a test. Give it our first, first closed. Lined up there, there. There we go, guys. And it's flush. Let's open it. But okay, guys, another simple, easy job. And Really nice, it looks really nice, guys. The hardware it looks really, really nice. Okay, and if you want to put a padlock on the front, it goes in this hole here on the back side of the gate. Okay, guys, this is this was important too, so I have to go all the way around mowing the grass. I want to make sure my uh tractor fit through the gate. Um, Could have made it just a tiny bit wider, but nonetheless it fits through. I want to buy one of these slide bolt latches. Just showing you guys which ones, a variety of them they have. Spent less than six bucks for it. And I put it on back side of the gate just in case we want to lock it from the inside. Okay guys, um, I'm done with the latch and the handle. I actually like this handle so smooth, better than the one I put on the front. And uh, drill the holes in here. If it was flush mount, I could have mounted this bracket that it came with here. But this is perfect. I can put a lock here also if I want. So we got a latch in the inside, handle in the inside. If you would like to see the entire privacy fence construction, please click on the link in the description box so you can go check that out.